I mean, tribalism is kind of in our nature, you know, and I think we just kind of like poke the bear whenever we say it. I tend to say it a lot, you know, and I definitely say it with like a hint of negativity. Mm -hmm. um, but like, I can't help but see that also within, I mean, our church, bro, like we, yeah. it, if it's on a congregational level, if it's like in between, like, like if it's within a congregation and there's like struggles between staff and there's division between like individuals and people, that's frightening. If there's divisions between congregations and congregations don't want to like, you know, worship together or like, you know, I don't know, like, I guess have the same theology. Like that gets extremely tricky and it just comes back to, again, like teams and having more allegiance to your team than the one who created teams and like, literally you and every individual who's a part of them. Um, and I think that like that definitely rubs into politics and you're absolutely right. Just describing like, okay, like if I lose this point here, then my team loses. And you're really, I think, fearing man more than God at that point, because like you want the respect of your team, um, but you also want victory over the other side who are also made in like the image of God. And we got to like be able to remember that aspect as well. However much like their opinions and their ideologies might like confuse me or like frustrate me. It's like, okay, you have to engage everyone as Christ would engage them. And what that looks like, bro, I got no freaking clue, you know? Yeah. It's, um, it's one at a time too, because yeah. you're not going to win or not win. It shouldn't even be about winning really. Yeah. You're not going to, not going to relate to someone. If mm -hmm. you're in a crowd and they're in a crowd and it's this, I, like this pride element comes in yeah. of trying to look good or trying to win the debate. Right. And no one changes their mind based on losing a debate. They right. change their mind based on having this heart to heart discussion. Mm, that's so real. Instead of a debate. Yeah. Because if it's an argument and a debate, you know, I can tune out all of your points. Yeah. You could kick my butt in it and I'm still going to go home with the same opinion. Right. And you might look good to whoever's watching. Yeah, but ultimately, like you're not swaying me. Exactly. Um, and I think if we're trying to make a difference in the world, it's just through those individual relationships. Of hey, this is like how I feel about this. Yeah. I see where you're coming from here. Mm -hmm. This is why I feel that way. And then praying about it. Yeah. And then you know, if they come to see a different way than you do, yeah, that's awesome because God gave them a different insight than you. Which is which is like super slow. And I think that's another thing that we struggle with that I struggle with is just like personal relationships are hard and they're very slow moving. They move at like God's pace and not mine. And when they move at mine, then they tend to like fall apart usually. Um, but like I was thinking about as you were talking, um, just how like Christ kind of maybe had dealt with that situation or at least definitely how Paul had dealt with a lot of tribalism after Christ's resurrection in terms of Jews and Gentiles, bro, because yeah. that was the big distinction, the big separation. And yeah. like, Literally half of the New Testament is like, look, there is no distinction anymore. There is no longer Jew and Gentile or Greek or whatever. It's like y'all are made one together with Christ. You are of the same flesh, of the same blood, of the same body with the God of the universe, which is amazing. And the fact that like of anything that like unites us, we are so privileged, privileged and so blessed to have Christ unite us. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really when we like, forget that he can and does unite us that like the division just gets gross bro and i think about um especially like i don't know in in the bible like circumcision was like a great example because you had jews who wanted everybody to get circumcised because like that was their team bro that was their party and if like if you circumcised yourself or were circumcised it's how you showed allegiance and you were winning bro and any time that like you want to debate or like talking about the law with people and you you got that like thumbs up from bros that were also circumcised like well and it seems so like minor to us now thinking yeah. about it but that that's a very big commitment it is and so just for someone to come along and say like hey that's the old covenant yeah it doesn't matter in the same light anymore it's about the circumcision of the heart mm -hmm. that's like whoa man like you you realize what i went through for yeah. this like how deep i dove into this and now you're telling me i'm wrong yeah and it's like, I, I can see how the same thing with our points and our deeply seated views. And sometimes yeah. there is a very clear right and wrong, and sometimes there's not. But mm -hmm. it's very, it's, the more committed we are to our views, and the yeah. more personally we identify with our views, right. um, the harder it is to lose them. And I think that's why Absolutely. 
think hard to be reason. open that way. I think it's another reason why you shouldn't identify so much with your political views as much as that, I mean, yeah. identity is a huge theme. Like, exactly. Obviously, your identity is in Christ. Yeah. And so you don't identify your relationships. You don't identify in your activities. Mm-hmm. Also, shouldn't identify with your political views. And it's really easy to be like, oh, I'm a conservative or oh, I'm a liberal. Yeah. And I stand on these things. And so when someone challenges that, you take it very personally. Yeah. Whereas if you're a Christian mm-hmm. and you're who these are my thoughts and my views, it's very easy to be like, but right well, ultimately at the end right. of the day i can have a dinner with you and yeah. you could be completely disagreeing with me on some on like multiple things yeah but we agree with christ and we're, we're good yeah and it's so interesting to me that i mean i might be short-sighted on this but i think christianity is unique in that aspect where we do have um unity as a core value um and unity amongst really like literally every tribe and nation and tongue Um, And that's something that kind of gets like idealized in politics, idealized at least like in the American dream where like a melting Mm -hmm. pot, so to speak. But like Christ literally came to unite every single human on planet Earth like that was, that is now and that will be, you know, like under his name, like under his like grace. Like that's unfathomable to me. And like also to kind of like, you know, maybe dip back a couple of points earlier when we're talking about teams and stuff, I'm talking about how there's been teams in the past, um, you know, Jew and Greek, Pharisee, Sadducee, whatever it was, and now we have, you know, red or blue. It's strange how surprised we are now that those teams still exist or that that mentality is so ingrained in us because we can look back at history and say, man, this has been here since the early church at least and really since before that because, I mean, what was... Moses, Sadducees, Pharisees. Right, like what was the conquest of Canaan, bro? I mean, that was like, that kind of hits on a bunch of stuff that we were talking about earlier in terms of like war and whether or not it's ordained. It's whatever. But like, there were people who despised each other, you know, who had been able to like kind of live within borders and stuff like that, but that were constantly at war. The Old Testament is just like war, peace, war, peace, war, peace. And that's really like, up until like maybe the most recent history, it's like war's been a common thing. War is still a common thing. And that just comes back to teams, bro. I, I think it's yeah. forgotten that we're we've been at war for like seventeen years now, eighteen years now. Yeah. And uh before that there was op, you know, Desert Storm. Desert Storm. There was uh Granada, there was Vietnam, the Korea. Cold War. Well no, there's a Cold War, right. Vietnam, Korea. You know, the Proverbs are talking about or is it Proverbs? No, or is it Christ, but talking about there's always going to be war and rumors of war. Yeah, like, and yeah, we're talking about the it. coming date. Uh, we can we can look it up in a minute. Where I don't want to misquote it, but uh, there's definitely a precedent that there will always be that until yeah. the world is, re- you know, Christ returns and makes it new because the world's a broken world we're living in right now. Yeah, I think it's something along the lines of um, like, oh, here you go, Matthew twenty four. Six, I think it is. I want to say Proverbs because it sounds so much like a proverb. I feel, I mean, he probably could be quoting it. Um, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed for this must take place, but the end is not yet. So when he's talking about like the end times, it's like pretty much the same thing we've been saying. It's like, hey, don't be surprised when there's war, when there's division. Like you will have trouble in this world because like you're still like stained by sin and brokenness. And as much as like I have come to redeem you, there are people like Christ prophesied, like people are going to reject that message and they are still rejecting it, which like, like breaks my heart, you know, especially to see the, like the fruits of death for lack of better words. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, yeah, like it's, it's strange how surprised we are, um, but not necessarily how heartbroken we are when that kind of um, becomes a situation.